Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. All right, Atar, it's somewhere up ahead. What is this? Am I being attacked by a goat, really? Only a fool lets himself get surrounded. Uh, as soon as you sheath that weapon, your clothes disappear. Oh, well. So, yes. There's a report of vampires. It's up to us. A vigilant of Stendar and his executioner. Hmm, it must be down below. All right, let's let me try to go back I'm this way. I don't want anybody to fall. the cave was here at the bottom. Oh boy, I tell you. The mountains in Skyrim. Alright, at least there's a way around. It's like a path. With stone markers, even. Alright, wait. Okay. Something's Dark. wrong. Dangerous. A mage, look out! Stendar, take you. Hmm. The nerve of him to attack us. I'm resisting. See, I'm resisting picking these flowers. All right, let's get inside and see about these vampires. If he is undead. Answer my query, stranger, and I will know the difference between triumph and failure. You can't argue with these. You mages. there. They'll attack you on sight. He's not attacking. Answer my query, and I will tell you if wars have any meaning. Answer me! Really, you'll raise your voice at me? No. Not if you're going to yell. <sighs> I apologize. But others may not afford you such a courtesy. Hmm. I'm sure this they wouldn't. This is not a time for thin skin or hesitation. I don't care for riddles, and I'm not going to call you out of your name. My intent was not to confuse. I've been so consumed by this quest, I didn't know where else to turn. What is this war you're referring to? What quest are you on? For the last two years, I have embarked on a single road. 
Ours was to walk its twists and turns, overcome its many obstacles. All the while believing that if I followed it to the end, I would find redemption. Only it appears the road ends here. In this hollow cave, with the corpse of the child I was asked to save. It was rumored that a child left for Eastmarch to join the Stormcloaks, in defiance of the father's alignment with the Empire. For a lord's house, the truth was far more incriminating. And for a loving father, one far more heartbreaking. Thus the Lord could not trust anyone, save an Argonian prisoner. One guilty of the child's same crime. Vampirism. You said you were guilty of vampirism, yet you don't look like a vampire. Yes, the skin, eyes and fangs are telltale signs. But some men can't be sure the same is true for other races. I was staying at an inn near the border when one of the local Nords decided to take offense with my presence. His was to challenge me to a brawl. And when I refused, he accused me of being a vampire. Hmm. Well, that probably didn't go over very well. The word was toxic. That morning, two bodies were found outside, torn to shreds. Unrecognizable masses, if not for the bones and teeth. Things were tense around the village, and the guards were in a hurry to solve the case and placate the locals. I made an easy scapegoat. Locked in that cell for days, I began to starve. Not for blood. But for food, theirs was to offer me bread in exchange for a confession. It was better to Should die by the no axe than starvation, but few can stomach either. So I did what all mortals do when there is no logical escape. I prayed <coughs> to Julianos for temperance, to Stendar for mercy, to Mara for love. And when I awoke the next morning, my cage was gone, as was my hunger. Hmm. Are you suggesting that the Divines freed you from prison? Not quite. But they granted me the resolve to persevere, so that I could give those who would aid me time to arrive. This is how the Divines act. Not through direct force, but through a subtle nudge, an encouraging word, or a favorable wind. This appears to be a necromancer hideout and not a vampire lair. Vampire dens have always been notoriously easy to track. Theirs is to cling to the fringes of a major hold, close to the road where traders pass. That is where a runaway vampire would seek shelter amongst her kind. This one, however, had spent her entire life in the care of her noble parents. Hers was to run to where no one else could find her. The caves and nooks where darker forces wish to carry on unseen. Who freed you from prison? The night before, I was paid a visit by a man, his face shrouded by the hood of his robe. In his arms, he cradled an urn, filled with the dust of a vampire. The dust was to be scattered around my cell, as proof of my demise. I knew not how much coin he had passed to my jailers, but it was enough to carry on with the ruse. Outside the barracks, a carriage awaited us both. It took us to a nearby chateau, where I would meet my true employer. 
A clever ploy. What happened next? When they brought me before the House Lord, I told him I did not kill those men. He told me he already knew. The real murderer was his own kin. He asked me if it was true about vampires. If they formed clans, family. He wanted to know if I knew where his daughter had fled. I told him no. But I could find her. After all, I was a hunter. A member of the Order of the Virtuous Blood. So I told him why I came to Skyrim and my desire for penance. Then he made an offer. A second chance for him, his daughter, and for me. Hmm. So many questions. How did you track the child down? It was a hunch, but with nary a lead, ours was to rely on chance. So I listened for rumors of necromancy first, and vampires second. There was an argument at the Bee and Barb about some nefarious activity near Shore Stone. Some claimed it was black mages, others said vampires. Ours was to follow the lead here, to Balderfall Cave. One could only pray to our cave that our arrival was not too late. I assume the bodies mean you were... too late. Not exactly. The child was still alive when I entered the cave. Not only alive, but healthy and smiling. What? One of the bodies that lies here was once a highborn, the kin of a noble. My old friend Arlaz had a saying. Sickness is a virtue. The healthier a vampire was, the more often he had fed. The girl left me no choice. Hers was an existence that lived to feed, to milk the blood of those around her. Including the unvetting necromancers that took her on as an apprentice. Given the girl's demise, what happens now? Someday, I will return to that village and tell her father a lie. It is not one that can be told right away. I will tell him she was a sweet girl who ran to protect him. A girl who laughed, who danced, and who loved. A girl who sought a cure and in the absence of one, took her own life. Ours is to tell him she achieved everything we hoped to out of life in a quarter of the time. Hmm. You said finding the girl was a form of penance. What crime did you commit? Before coming to Skyrim, I had spent my life hunting vampires for the Order. Really? Much like the Vigilance, we often hunted in pairs. My partner was a Nightblade named Arlaz. He used stealth and shadow to eliminate our targets, while I covered him from a distance. This was a remarkable courage. Many in the Order prefer long-range attacks to avoid the chance of infection. Arlaz never deterred from his methods. Courage alone, however, was not enough to prepare us for what lay in that den magic types. nearly four winters ago. Destroy them. What happened in the den? I watched Arlaz scout ahead from afar, melding to the shadows in search of the enemy. The den was for all intents and purposes empty. Yet, the center table showed not a fleck of dust, and the torches on the wall were recently lit. A shiver swam up my tail like a cold fish. But I knew Arlas was safe so long as he stuck to the shadows. Until I saw the shadows themselves move. The shadow spread its wings, as did the others, cloaking the room in darkness. They came from above, 
like bats descending on their prey. Ours was to call to my friend and reach for my staff, trying to shield his escape with fire. We barely made it out alive, but not unscathed. One of those foul demons had raked its talons across our last back. All I had to do was look into his narrowing pupils to see the infection had taken root. And why not just give him a potion? It was progressing faster than any case of Vampiris I had ever witnessed. Potions had no effect. There was no time to take him to a healer. What did you do? Ours was to ask for his last request. He said, cure me. I thought it was a joke. He always made me laugh. Now I know the extent of my folly. Months later, I discovered his journal while putting away his things. It seems he had anticipated infection from the moment he joined the Order. He had been corresponding with a mage named Falion. Falion? A mage who was studying a cure. Falion from Morthal? I think I've met him. Huh. Well, you can't blame yourself. You did what you thought was right. Yours is a statement that I am thankful for. Perhaps, as the Divines work in the shadows, there is a greater purpose to be found. I thought our last death brought me to Skyrim to save the nobleman's daughter. Now I wonder if they have brought me here to meet you. Oh my goodness. Is this the divine will of Stendar? I'm sensing light now. Light from within your soul. Tell me, talk about the Order of the Virtuous Blood. Theirs is a centuries-old order, dating back to the Oblivion Crisis. It began as merely a gathering of feeble lords, until the Divines intervened. Legends say the hero of Kvarch became a member, and trained the Order in the ways of combat. That knowledge was passed down from old members to new, and over time, the Order became more organized, and its rituals more austere. Today, members are handpicked and trained from a young age. Ours was a life cloistered in barracks and libraries, sharpening the weapons of war. We dedicated our lives to a single purpose. To silence all other voices, so that we are better attuned to listen. What will you do now? Ours is to wait here for more of her brethren. The girl may have taken a liking to some of them, and chosen to infect rather than kill. If you are in need of a companion, however, I will be honored to journey with you on your quest. All right, before I make a decision on that, I have one more question to ask. You asked about the point of war. What war do you fight? It was a question that was asked of me whenever I began to doubt my faith or the side I have chosen in this fight. Ours is a life consumed by blood. I have lost family to wars great and small. Wars on the battlefield and in the mind. Wars blur the lines of morality until we know not whether victory is a triumph of the spirit or a failure to be civil. Only as members of the Order of the Virtuous Blood, ours was a resolve that could not favor, even when our foes wore the faces of children. What is the meaning of war? It is to fight for a cause that is absolute, against an evil that deserves no clemency. My goodness.
goodness. Your sentiments, they echo my own. It's almost as though I'm talking to myself, looking in a mirror. Except my reflection would look a little bit better. But if that's what you believe, then what's the problem? If sanguine vampiris is merely a disease, one that can be cured, then my faith is once more cast into doubt. Ours was a childhood race to do one thing. Hunt vampires. I know of no other life. Hmm. Well, we do know in our studies that vampirism can be cured, but there is a point of no return. The child was such. Then I thank you once more for your counsel. It is difficult to know if the decisions one makes are right without another set of eyes. I fear that my training with the Order would influence my decision. That I would think only of the easy way. To kill rather than cure. Hmm. You still appear conflicted over your decision. When I was young, my mentor told me a tale of the peasant who found a stray cat living in the alley behind his house. His was to bemoan its presence, but weeks later he found that the cat kept his home free of vermin. The peasant grew quite fond of the cat, until one day it bit his leg and infected the man with a terrible fever. The peasant, who had never been ill a day in his life, finally went to see the city alchemist whom he had stubbornly avoided all these years. It was love at first sight. But who is to say how the peasant would feel the next day? All he could do is take that chance. I wish to follow you on your quest. I do not know to what end, but ours is to trust in the will of the Divines. Then, I would like to extend an invitation for you to join the Vigilant of Stendar. Perhaps even the Dawn Guard with your experience in vampire hunting. Follow me. Yours is to lead. Ours is to follow. I'm here to help. Yours is to pass, and ours is to delight. Let's get going. All right. Let's examine this area here. So, yes, the child was a vampire. Let me see if I can unlock this. Disarm the trap. Glass armor. Can definitely be sold. Frenzy poison, I'll leave that alone. And here we have a skill book. And the master necromancer. Alright. Among the hist. Atar. It's time for us to go. I think we have a new ally. And I feel ashamed that I mistook him for a vampire. What the slaughter fish. I'm leaving those alone. What's this here? Corundum. Is there any other corundum here? Doesn't appear to be. All right. Vigilant. Let's go. We 
you've stopped. What is it? Mm, it's night. So we could have used your help earlier. Hissed. In fighting this, uh... Mage out here. I think it was a necromancer. Yes, a necromage. Okay, let's look at my list of things here. There is a suspicious elf that we need to locate. Looks like he may be at the Yorgrim Overlook. All right, it looks like Silver Drift is the closest location. Let's go. Is there someone sitting hey. up here? Look out. Is this a per- Yes, there's movement. Look out. I'm here to help. All right, we've have I'm warning you. Back There's off. bandits up here. By the In gods, the end, I feel like I can crush a giant child. All right, among the hiss, Not let's see what you can do. Is now there? ain't this is What? Is that a paralysis spell? Good work. You can me. A bow. Both of you performed admirably. Alright, it's time for us to continue on in search of the elf.